the behalf of the bride and groom, we thank you for coming today and honoring them on their special day. Mr. Corey Nakatsu is going to say a few words to the bride and groom and then open us up in a word of prayer. You may be seated at this time. I too wanted to extend my gratitude to all of you who were able to join us for this celebration today on behalf of the Dever and Nakatsu families. We're so grateful that you're here. And we know that a lot of you came great distances and made great sacrifices to be here, so we're grateful. Um, this last Monday night, Katie and I were able to spend our last father-daughter date night together yeah. as a single woman. And during the course of that evening, we uh, it occurred to us that it was exactly nine years ago this week. We were also on a father-daughter date night, and... Katie that night made a very, very significant decision. Uh, she communicated to me that she wanted to put her whole trust in God alone to uh, bring the one that he would have for her someday. And uh, she would also trust me with her heart to help her discern God's absolute best for her. And in the months to come, uh, we were able to, through scripture, put together a guide, uh, biblically, uh, by which we would be able to discern what God's best looked like. And um, we would use that to measure the one. And I want you to know that uh, there is one who fits that, who fits that measurement perfectly. Um, not because he's perfect, but because he's humble. Uh, not because of his own righteousness, but because of God's goodness that is in him and the Christ-likeness that we see in him. Amen. His name is Jedediah Robert Duggar, and he's a man who loves God. And because he does, I know that you will love my daughter. So I just want to encourage fathers, uh, especially that the blessings that come from a turning of a father's heart to his children, as we see in Malachi, and subsequently the turning of the children's heart to their fathers can't be overstated. Um, we see the fruit of those blessings standing before us here today. Um, and it's the fruit of God's goodness and His faithfulness uh, for those that love Him. So, Jed and Katie, uh, I'm going to make this very short and just say, well done. Well done. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray, please? Heavenly Father, we've come here today to bring glory to the name of Jesus Christ and to witness Jed and Katie become man and wife. It's a marvelous thing, just as it was in the beginning. And we thank you, Father, for the powerful work that you've done in and through each of them and through their relationship thus far. As they've endeavored to honor you in their relationship up to this point, may you also be honored today and throughout their marriage. Father, out of the goodness of your love, would you establish the work of their hands to the ministry that you've prepared for them? Strengthen their testimony of faith in Jesus Christ that they would be bold witnesses for his name's sake. We ask in Jesus' name that your favor, Lord, would rest upon them, upon this marriage. And if it be your will, would you bless them with the heritage of those who fear your name? Amen. We are finally here. The big day has arrived. And Katie is a beautiful bride, isn't she, Jed? Oh, yes. He agrees. <laughs> and, you know, Katie, he cleans up pretty good himself, doesn't he? Yeah. You know, I reflected back a little bit in our time of premarital counseling, and we enjoyed our time together. But I would remind you of just a few things, and I just have a brief charge for you. We talked about the Titus two, And as your marriage grows and you go farther in this journey, always be on the hunt for somebody who's a little farther down the road. People that love the Lord, love each other, and are raising their family for the Lord, and always be gleaning from them. We also talked about as you entered into this courtship, your, your goal was to win Katie's heart, and obviously you've done that. But this is just the pursuing of that heart, and she's going to have layers and layers of that heart. And if you will pursue her, and that with the eyes that you looked at when she began to walk down that aisle, you look at her with those eyes, eyes for the rest of your day, and you keep a heart that pursues her. We talked about Ephesians 5, 33. We said, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, 
even as himself, and that his wife see that she reverence her husband. And we said for you, Jed, the mark is not other men. So many times we compare amongst ourselves, but the standard is Christ. And his love for the church is your standard for loving Katie. And Katie, that respect we talked about. Jed may go into the world and have tough days and it may be struggles at home, but when he comes in the door and you're for him and you respect him, nobody else really matters at the end of the day. It'll be you that wins his heart and encourages him. And then we talked about the importance as well as, as to continue to grow. And, and I would just charge you in a couple thoughts that are there. First Peter 1, 3, 1 through 6 says this. And really, I won't read those first six verses, but it's dealing with the power of the influence of the wife. And, you know, Katie, you really will be the heart of the home in so many ways. He'll come in, but that, that guiding of the heart of the home and your children will so much be upon you. And your influence of the home is hard to describe in words. We could go back and in chapter 3 of First Peter, the context is dealing with maybe a spouse that was lost. And obviously this is not the case, but it still speaks of her influence. And if we could go back to even the Garden of Eden, we think about Eve's influence. First Timothy would tell us that, that, that uh, Adam wasn't, uh, he wasn't deceived, but yet his love for his wife was so great. So use that power of your influence to always point your family towards the Lord. And then in verse 7 of 1 Peter, it says this, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Just a couple of quick reminders. It says dwell with her. Sometimes we walk in the door and we're present, but we're not really dwelling. Every day when you pull up to the house and you're going to get out of your truck, your car, you're going to walk in, just stop and say, Lord, let me be ever present. Let me dwell with him to be engaged. And then according to knowledge, there's no other lady just like Katie. She's one of a kind. So you're going to spend the rest of your life knowing her according to knowledge. Study her, learn of her, and then we give honor. And we talked about, if you remember the comparison that we gave, we talked about uh, men are kind of like the old plastic Tupperware one gallon, and the ladies are like the vase, the one gallon. Equal capacity vessels. We can treat one pretty rough. We can take you camping. We can change the oil in the car. It doesn't really matter. But with the vase, we give honor to the, to the weaker vessel. We treat it differently. And so you honor your wife. And then the Bible talks about being heirs together of the grace of this life. There's something about marriage that God instituted. There's something so powerful that God gives a grace in marriage. There's a grace together that's hard to put into words. And then it says that your prayers be not hindered. Pray together. You're going to pray together today. You've already been praying together. Continue to pray. The power of a, of a husband and wife in prayer, uh, coming together, joined together, praying for your family, the Lord will bless that. Could I pray for you at this time? Father, we thank you for Jed and for Katie. Lord, we thank you for their families, Lord, the heritage that they have. Lord, now they come, and today they wanted it to be all about you. Though the marriages were focusing on them, but Lord, they wanted to reflect everything back to you. Lord, they both know you as their Savior. Lord, they're equally joined. Lord, they love each other. They love their families. Lord, they love your word. Lord, would you bless this home? Lord, would you help them to continue to grow closer to you and as they grow closer to you, Lord, we know that they're going to grow closer together. Lord, would you bless them in the days? And we know in any life and any marriage, there are those tough days. But Lord, you use even sometimes tough days to draw us closer together. All the experiences, bless them and we'll thank you for that. In Christ's name we pray, amen. At this time, we're going to have the exchanging of the vows. Jenny and Katie have written their vows for today. <clears throat> Katie, in Genesis we read, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. God has ordained that the husband be the head of the wife. He instructs me as the one who will be your husband to love unconditionally as Christ loves the church. Apart from Christ, I cannot love you, listen to you, or protect you as I should. Naturally, I would focus on my own needs instead of yours. But with Christ and by His grace, I vow to be your humble spiritual leader, to be a man of the word, to remain faithful to you, to stay open with you, guard you, protect you, listen to your needs, and love you whether you are healthy or sick, rich or poor, young or old. 
It is my desire and delight to follow scriptural teachings and grow in God's word together as long as we both shall live. With all my heart, I make these vows to you. Jed, in Ephesians we read, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. And in Proverbs it says, The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. God has ordained that the wife be subject to her husband. He instructs me as the one who will be your wife to submit to your authority as you submit to Christ. Apart from Christ, I cannot love you, respect you, or honor you as I should. Naturally, I will focus on my own needs instead of your own, yours. But with Christ and by his grace, I vow to submit to your leadership, pray for you always, trust you, honor you, remain faithful to you, be your greatest encourager, listen to your needs, and love you, whether you are healthy or sick, rich or poor, young or old. It is my desire and delight to follow scriptural teaching and grow in God's word together as long as we both shall live. With all my heart, I make these vows to you. Thank you very much. We're coming to a time now where Katie and Jeb would like to enter into communion together. With communion, we're reminded of two things. We're reminded of the death of Christ. Easter, of course, is tomorrow. We'll celebrate Easter. We're reminded of his resurrection. But in communion, we're reminded of the death of Christ, what he did for us on the cross. But not only are we reminded of the death of Christ, but we're also reminded that he's, he's coming again. It's a remembering. And today, Katie, when those doors opened, and rightly so, we were all focused on you. But when Jesus comes, the bride will be focused on the bridegroom. And so with communion today, we remember what he did for us, and we celebrate his, his return as you focus on uh, keeping Christ first in your home. For your love. Thank you for dying for us, Lord. Thank you for rising again, Lord. Lord, we know that you are the one that's brought us together. You're the one that's been in this relationship, God. Lord, it's all because of you that we're standing here. Thank you for your love for us, God. Thank you for my wife. <laughs> Pray that you'd bless our marriage our life together, Lord. I want you to be pleased with us, Lord. Mm -hmm. Just always listen, God. In your name, amen. Amen. It's praise to shine and light to dim and when the world will look on me let it be the Lord they see for it's not other, Lord, for marriage, thank you that you're a Savior, Lord, no matter what we go through, Lord, you're going to be with us, you're going to guide us, Lord, even though we walk through the valley, valley of the shadow of death, Lord, we will fear no evil, for thou art with us, thy rod and thy comfort, and they, they comfort us, Lord, we praise you, God. Thank you for Katie, the beautiful bride she is, Lord. <laughs> Thank you that you give good gifts to your children. We know we don't deserve it, Lord.
the bridal party as witnesses of these marriage vows will you now in the years to come support and uphold their marriage in love and prayer will you hold them accountable to the vows that they are making today well we're coming to the good part here Jed but before we get there we got to get some rings Jer would you give Jed his ring please and would you please place this oh he's got it the surprise would you please place that on her third finger of her left hand and repeat after me, with this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And would you please, Lauren, give Katie her ring? And would you please place that on Jed's third finger of his left hand and repeat after me, with this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Jed, you may kiss your bride. Would you stand with us please at this time and we're going to sing a song once again as we keep our focus on the Lord of how great thou art and uh, and we will uh, that you'll find that those words in your uh, program. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Jedediah Duggar. 